Pastor Jeff, we are here at the end of our Jesus Resolution series, and it's been great to hear from you, hear from Pastor Rory, um, just preach these really, really um, needed messages. And also, it just paints the perfect picture, the perfect vision that God has given you for our church and, and the way we're moving forward. And what I really love is that we, we really are going from revival now to the next thing that God yeah. is calling us to yeah. do. Um, and you talk a lot of not only just what happened in the, within the last year, but globally as well, like different yeah. churches that are going through revival, yeah. going through the same exact thing, the need for discipleship, the need to follow the ways of Jesus. And it's just, it's really phenomenal. And then you talk about the history of our church and just the faithfulness of Ron Keller and yeah. Chuck Boer and, yeah. and then to see where we're at now. It's just, it's just really phenomenal. And so I know you had a lot to say yeah. about that. Well, first off, you know, I really am amazed that when I go up the study break mm. and how I get away for those days and I write the messages or at yeah. least the outlines and series for the coming year. But, you know, it's, it, it amazes me how God knows where we're going to be going, yeah. how just appropriate it is. Mm -hmm. Because this year, when I went up there, one of the first things I did, I said, you know what, before I write the, the series out completely, I'm, I, think I, need to, I think I need to write a vision document. And a vision document is kind of detailed where I believe the Lord is leading, and then I usually send it to the elders, and they'll right. look it over. And then, But I wrote one this year, and after, it's one of those things, I wrote it, I sent it. And then when I got back, I read it and I thought, man, this is really good. But you know, <laughs> at the time, I'm, I'm just, lead, I'm answering God's call mm -hmm, and I'm thinking, right. where, where do you want to lead our church? We've got mm -hmm. the four campuses, the, the care center, where do we go from here? And then that whole thing of discipleship. And what I've noticed, and I think you probably have too, is that we have a lot of Christ followers who are well-intentioned. They are. Yeah. They're, their heart is pure. It's right. They're trying mm -hmm. to follow Jesus. But for some reason, we live in a time where the, the understanding of, of Bible, of Bible knowledge is just not there. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like we went through a phase where, you know, theology, Bible knowledge isn't that mm -hmm. important. It's the experience you have with Jesus. Right. And as I've said before, if you go too far either way, you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's all experiential and it's not uh, tempered mm -hmm. by truth, then that's dangerous. Yeah. That's how cults start. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how false religions begin. But if you go so far into what we call bibliology, where you worship the Bible and you throw out experience, then it becomes all head knowledge and there's no heart to it. There's no right. love. There's no passion or pursuing Jesus, just pursuing precepts. And mm. so I thought, you know, this is a good time right now while people are open yeah. to understanding Jesus and yeah. what it means to follow him to do a discipleship movement through the entire church. Mm. And it, it doesn't just stop there with me. Right. And for me, it's the precursor to something else mm. because you, you, you're only as strong externally as you are internally first. Yeah. So if we can get our church really strong internally, I, I believe that because of 50 years of investment into this church yeah. to help people far from God come near to God with Ron Keller, Chuck Boer, and now under, well, with, with my ministry, mm -hmm. then I think what God is doing is he wants us to be strong now. Yeah. And as we're strong internally, that sending agency idea of sending yeah. a whole new generation out into our community first as tent makers in the marketplace, mm -hmm. as pastors, teachers, missionaries. And then I really do have a passion to take the gospel back yeah. to where it originated, where to the people who brought it to us. Right. And so that's something that's a little bit hard for people to fathom because I don't, I mean, you know, being in missions most of my life, Drew, uh, I've been a real study of, I've done a real study on missiology and where missions is effective, where, mm -hmm. I don't know if most people know this, for instance, it's estimated that there's somewhere around, I believe, uh, and I, I, you're going to have to give me a little grace here, yeah. somewhere around 1,750 people groups on planet Earth. Mm. Okay. So out of all of those people groups, only 50 have been classified as unreached. Wow. So that means we're getting pretty close right. to the gospel being delivered to all nations. Mm. The problem with that stat is this. All the nations in Europe are post-Christian. Right. So they don't, they don't qualify as unreached or unchurched, yeah. but the believers are few and far between. Yeah. So do we start over? <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah right. it's true that the unreached people groups are small now because we've mm -hmm. done a good job in the last century of sending out missionaries, teachers, yeah. Uh, people like Pioneer Bible Translators, Wycliffe mm -hmm. Bible Translators, we've translated the Bible into many languages. Yeah. But 
for all practical purposes, where the gospel originated from, as far as America goes, it, it was it, it came from Europe, mm. and ultimately it came from where Asia, and mm. then ultimately from Jesus mm. and his yeah. disciples. It spread throughout what is now modern day Turkey. Yeah. Uh, so, I believe that we're at a time in history where. If I can just be honest, there's a weakness in the American church. There's mm. a, it's the mile wide, inch deep. <laughs> there's a real shallowness to it. Yeah. Its theology has moved more and more toward, you know, me theology. God is going <laughs> to give me everything I want. And those yeah. are very popular. Yeah. You know, God just wants you to be happy. God just wants you to have everything you want. Right. And there's a real, but how do you take, a, if a theology is accurate, mm. it has to translate well across all cultures. Yeah. So explain to me then how the Bible, how the how Christianity is exploding in places of great poverty. Mm. Is it that there are less Christians than we are? Is it somehow we're more mature than they are? People who walk a day to go to church, uh, you know, yeah. uh, countries like South America, Africa, parts of Asia. Uh, you know, again, hundred million Christians now in China un, in the underground. Yeah. Eighty million is estimated in Russia. So are these people? These and these are people who are persecuted daily right. for their faith. Persecution is rampant. Right. Not in America. But it's rampant. Mm -hmm. So my thing is that I think well, what, what I'm trying to get us back to is the, is the first century Acts 2 kind of Christianity yeah, yeah. to where we're concentrating on the apostles' doctrine. We're reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. We're not becoming so stuffed shirt cerebral. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we want to learn what the Bible says. We want the essentials of our faith, and then we want to live them out day to day. And, I've, and as we do that, we'll be able to be great ambassadors for the gospel. So yeah. it starts in our church, mm -hmm. but make no mistake, in, in my mind, I know that God is going to do something great. If we'll be faithful in the little, which is faithful with who he's given us, yeah. I believe he's going to give our church a fantastic responsibility. And we yeah. could be, we could be that next little hub right. from which a, a major uh, movement of God is launched. Yeah. It's happened before, and I'm hoping that it'll happen again. Yeah, oh, definitely. And I think it's, I think it's actually really important to see just how foundational this church has been, like the people before us, before you, and and really how that's God's faithfulness to the, to those people of saying, no, 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 this is this was founded by people who were faithful, who believed in the church, and who want to see the gospel reached out not only locally but now globally. And I think that's so important as as you have this vision and. It's really, I don't know, like almost like we have something to come back to or we have a place to come back to. And now it's it's not so like, uh, I don't know how to say it, say this well, but it's almost when I went to Budapest uh, this past year and really preaching and, and talking to people, all this stuff. One of the things that was actually really crazy is that I expected to be like a mini apologist, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I have to prove the existence yeah. of God, really all these deep, but it wasn't like that. It was actual conversations of what what is the Bible? Who is Jesus? A lot of people did not know who Jesus was. Yeah, we're way back. Yeah, we, <laughs> that's well put, actually, yeah. Drew, because the conversations we're having now are way back before the apologetic stuff. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and I don't know if, it, maybe, maybe it's not wise to say before, but you're right, people are asking, well, just who who is Jesus right. exactly? Yeah. Uh -huh. What's the Bible? What is it? And right. so just basic <laughs> essentials of what discipleship, yeah. basic essentials and understanding who, what it is we believe and who we are. Yeah. That'll go a long way with people. Those oh, other questions yeah. will come later. Correct. Exactly. But that'll go a long If we can just equip people to have conversations with their friends. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I think evangelism is in some ways harder today than it's ever been, mm -hmm. but in many ways easier. Yeah. Harder because it's for, it's hard to get the first foot in the door. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But easier <laughs> Once you start talking to someone, they realize you're you're okay. Right, right, right. And yeah. that you go through the same issues they do, and mm -hmm. and it's it's always going to be friendship based, and that's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Start with your friends before oh, you start yeah, to do yeah. cold turkey. <laughs> start with somebody that you don't know. Right. Exactly. And because we all have a circle of influence. Mm -hmm. I, you know, mm -hmm. even me as a pastor, I've probably got twenty guys around me. Yeah. Either at the golf club or people that I meet all the time that are not believers. Yeah. Yeah. It right. just takes that initial step of inviting someone to yeah. a coffee and talking to them. Right. Exactly. It's so. it's really, to lack of a better word, it's really that simple. Yeah. To to provide. You mentioned Budapest. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll bet you you face some resistance, but not a lot. No, not a lot. Hardly, if any. And it was just yeah. walking up to the mm -hmm. on the street and talking to somebody. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that uh, interesting? Very, very interesting. Uh, when I was with Pastor Michael over there in Budapest, when we uh, went out to go talk about Jesus, we. 
um, encountered these two women who were taking a break from their job and Michael was asking them the questions. And then that's when he was like, do you, do you know Jesus? And, and literally the girl looked at him and was like, who? And Michael was like, Jesus, like, you know, of the Bible and all this stuff. And they're literally like, oh, no, like, we don't, like, I don't know anything about him. He, it's, he seems like a cool guy. Like that. And and both of us were just absolutely shocked. Well, I had the same experience in Georgia. Really? And the same experience in Armenia. Yeah. Not as much in Armenia because it's a Christian country, mm-hmm. right. but so is Hungary. Right, right, exactly. So just because, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So you still have a lot of young people that either don't know or know very little. Yeah. yeah. But as a result, they're not anti. Yes. You can't be anti somebody you don't know. You're right. They're yeah. not anti and they don't have any bad experiences, yeah. which makes which makes it, oh, you know, that's, my heart beats a little faster when I, because it becomes very organic, it becomes very, mm-hmm. okay, here's who he is. Forget yes. about it. All the things you've heard, here's who he is and yes. what he offers. What do you think? Right. Uh, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. I, Because I, when I'm by myself uh, and I was traveling and and I, I, sometimes I'll just get a coffee and I'll, my mind will start going in. Right, yeah. And it always goes into that aspect of, you know, if you started from scratch, if you, you know, if we, if you're 20 years old, and I know that's impossible to do, but if you're 20, <laughs> let's say you're 20 years old and you've never had any input into your life about mm-hmm. anything spiritual, I, I do believe the natural flow of your life would be God. Mm. You know, unless you've yeah. got some, the problem with the West is there's such a pre-commitment to materialism mm. that the God option is not even there. So any information we discover, yeah. even in science, mm. there's a prerequisite to couch it in Darwinian, mm. Darwinianism, right? Yeah, you, right, you, right so right. if I find something that seems to lend itself to a creator, I'm not allowed to take it that road. Yeah. I've got to somehow, like a piece of the puzzle, force it to fit in my preconceived and pre-committed to worldview. Right, right. Now, what you have to be careful of is they may say the same thing about the Christ follower. Yeah. Well, you're the same way. You find the piece of information, you're going to try to find it and fit it in your theology, world, the God worldview. Right. Well, the point is that both are honest mm. and, and will go where the, where the information leads you. I think it always leads you to God. Correct, yeah. The, the difficult questions of life are only asked because you're able to mm-hmm. ask them. Yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, I think if, if, if we can train up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, let's say thousands of people yeah. in basic, let's say 15 faith essentials, mm-hmm. and you say, what are those gonna be? Well, who's God? Right, right, right. Not according to you, but according to the Bible. Mm-hmm. What's the Bible? Mm-hmm. Uh, what is who's the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Uh, what does prayer accomplish, and how do you do mm-hmm. it? Yeah. How do you read the Bible? How do you study it? Yeah. These are so, and you can keep going on baptism. What is baptism? Right. What is evangelism? You could go on and find fifteen core essentials that, if everyone knew them, then when they have an encounter like you're talking about, yeah. which I which I assume that within the next ten years, those will be the encounters we have yeah. in America. Oh yeah, because uh-huh. yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> so if, if we're ready within ten years, mm-hmm. there could be a huge revival yeah. of people who are far from God coming right. near to God. We've just kind of been in that neb- that area where it, you're either anti or you're presuppose right. with a political situation. Mm-hmm. Every, and, and unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, and I do say unfortunately. <laughs> I'm not sure the church has done really well in aligning itself no. with. Uh, Oh, I got to be careful here. <laughs> you know, obviously, when you go, when you get involved in politics, there are going to be some parties that better reflect Christ than others. Yeah. But neither party does. Yeah. Uh-huh. As long as you understand right. that. Yeah. As long as you don't. That's vital. As long as you don't. Under, as long as you understand, there's not. This is the party of God. Yeah. And this is the party of Satan. <laughs> right. See, you got problems here because men and women are involved in both. And you don't know what's at the core. Right. You don't know what's going on underneath. Right. None of us do. They're still human. So for us, we try to make our vote count in, yeah. the, in the, I always call it the lesser of two evils. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm trying right. to find the lesser of two evils. <laughs> but I'm under no illusion that any party mm-hmm. is, is, the, is God's chosen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So, because when you do that, you alienate yourself. Right. You don't want people to think, well, I associate Christianity with everything about this party. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that, that my identity is not in a political party. Right. It doesn't mean that I don't have a favorite one. I do, but my identity is in Christ. Yeah. Don't, right. don't judge what I believe mm-hmm. by how I vote because that's a hard thing to do. Right, correct. Uh, so that, that's, I think in the next, in the next 10 years, yeah. though, Drew, what you're going to find is that that affiliation association mm-hmm. will begin to dissipate. Yeah. And the cream of the crop will come out. Right. 
And I think that the influence that Christianity will have will always be underneath. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you, you, you're never going to legislate morality. Mm -hmm. You're never going to force people to behave a certain right. way. Right. And that, and communism discovered that. Mm -hmm. after, right. I mean, I remember reading the story of what happened after Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to get the good Russian to give up money to help the victims of Chernobyl. <laughs> but, there were, but there was no motivation for it. Right. Why would I? Yeah. You know, I don't have a biblical or Christian or godly worldview. I would much rather spend my money on drink and, and, and me. What, and me. <laughs> yeah. Why would I give to somebody? I don't, you know. Yeah. And so they actually ask evangelical Christians at a forum, how do you get people to do good things? And of course, the answer was you can't. Yeah. It has to have a transformation from the inside out. And right. I've always said, if you want to change our country, it's not going to happen through politics. It's going to happen through the transformation of the gospel. Yeah, right. So, and I, I get misunderstood all the, believe me, I get the emails. Um, I get people misunderstand sure. what I'm saying. I, yeah. I know as, as uh, we live in a democracy, you need to mm -hmm. use your vote and you need to vote for the lesser of two evils. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but make no mistake, your citizenship is in heaven. Right. And, and we, we serve the kingdom of God first and foremost. Yeah. Exactly. So, all of that to say, if we are successful in a really good discipleship movement, yeah, we will be poised and ready. And I think it's, I think it could be as soon as let's see the graduates, so five years. Yeah, yeah. In the in five years' time, we'll mm -hmm. be able to walk up to people on the street like you did in Hungary. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we'll be able to just start a conversation. Yeah, without any offense. Yep. I think that's where we're headed. Yeah, I agree. I that was the biggest thing, biggest takeaway for me when I was in Budapest and Ukraine of having genuine conversations with people who don't know the gospel message, don't know Christianity, and having really good conversations. And I kept thinking, I was like, man, if I did this in the heart of LA, I, I would be chewed out. I, I oh, would, yeah. You know, like- Somebody just, would smack you, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I found the same thing. London mm -hmm. is not like the rest of most of Europe. No, oh, right. London right. is very different, too. London yeah. is the very uh, uh, anti- Oh, yeah. Which is incredible yeah. with all the churches, cathedrals, and all the, yeah. the high church mentality right, right, and the right. queen and the king. Mm -hmm. and the, but yeah. there, it, because it has become associated with a social or political agenda. Right, correct, exactly. And, and you never want that to happen. Right, yeah. Uh, because then they don't, they, want to, they don't want to hear because right. they automatically associate you with something they hate. Right, and those churches get swallowed up by that. <sighs> so then everybody who goes to it yep. either is hurt by the church or just disagree heavily with the hard truth of the yeah, Bible, yeah. which is tough. And, and you speak of London, I think of uh, um, uh, your friend, Calvin Robinson. Yeah. And I mean, he's really doing it over there. I mean, he's really standing up. Oh, he is. Have you seen him lately? <laughs> he cut all his hair off. Devastated oh, did he? Me. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I talked to him about a week ago. He's going to be speaking for us, I believe, in May or June. Oh, that's going to be a great time. But he's, yeah. yeah, he's doing a great job. But he, you know, the thing about him is when he uses, uh, what we would call more aggressive language. It's usually yeah, to the yeah. church, not the secular person. Yeah, which is to very the secular person. Yeah, there's a very, there's mm -hmm. a very, uh, very much compassion yeah, and patience yeah. and understanding. So right, yeah, yeah. But then again, Jesus was the same way with the religious <laughs> leaders of his day. <laughs> right, and, exactly. And totally different with the sinners of yeah. his day, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, very totally. kind, compassionate, forgiving. But with the mm -hmm. religious people, what is it? You brood of vipers. You <laughs> yeah. whitewash tombs. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't have He's a lot of pretty patience. aggressive. So I think, I think. As the church becomes knowledgeable of the faith essentials yeah. and compassionate mm -hmm. as it talks with the everyday person, yeah. she will be much more successful. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited for the next few years and to see God really just move in a really, really mighty way. That is not the typical, it's not, I have to be careful here now, it's not revival, but it's it's the way of of living the Jesus way. It's yeah. the way of living like him, doing the things that he did, saying the things that he says, and it, it's out of that revival. Yeah, and people forget that some of the greatest revivals of the past, Great Awakening, whatever, mm -hmm. came out of a, a renewed preaching and passion mm -hmm. to live holy lives. Right, yeah. The, yeah. the preacher, you know, uh -huh. they started saying, hey, we got, we're going the way of the world. We got to stop this. Yeah, yeah. You know, we serve one king. We serve one master. Yeah. And when, when they got serious about the pursuit of holy, revival broke out. Well, right, of course right. it did. <laughs> yeah. So with us, mm -hmm. we've been praying for revival for a long time, and I think God has given us a little foretaste of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the better days are ahead. Right, 100%. Yeah. yeah. You imagine I, what that would be like when an entire church starts pursuing purity. Oh, yeah. Not perfection. Right. Because, you know, we're never going to get that here. But 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 the will, like I said, it's the, the will mm -hmm. wants to live a godly life. And when yeah. we fail and we will, God's grace is there to pick us up. Right. But... Let's not let's not be you know let's not 
live in cheap grace. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Where, okay, well, I'm just going to do this because God's going to forgive me anyway. Whoa. Right, right. Whoa. right. <laughs> and you deny your usability and you deny revival and you deny yourself the abundant life. Right, so. exactly. I think of, um, we get ended on this, but the Asbury, right? They had yeah. their big revival. And uh, one of my favorite pastors, his name is A.J. Swoboda. Um, he's the one who wrote the After Doubt book. Oh, yeah. Um, good book. Yeah, really good book. A friend yeah, of mine, yeah. Drew, gave that to me. Fantastic. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Drew Rodriguez. <laughs> At first, I was like, who else is this? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a great book. You, Rob, I'm glad you gave that to yeah, me. It's yeah, on my yeah. desk right now. I've been going through it. Very yeah, good. Yeah, really good book. Well, they, that school had asked him to come. I don't know if it was the week prior or a few weeks prior uh, when their semester started, and they literally called it a revival week. It was like a whole event, whole revival, everything. And he talks about it in one of his sermons. And he says they were asked, they asked him to speak um, all the chapels about revival, about the Holy Spirit, all this stuff. And it's funny the way he talks about it. He's like, yeah, and there I go. I preached a sermon on the fire of the Holy Spirit, all this stuff. And he's like, you know what happened? Nothing. Just regular revival, like just worship chapel. And he's like, and then all of a sudden, a few weeks later, I hear about the campus pastor who thinks he preached the hor- the worst sermon he's ever preached, all of a sudden sparks a revival. Oh, and and so AJ Sabota just talks about our hearts of, you know, he's like, here I am, want, like, you know, thinking like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna start a revival at the school because that's the theme of it and this whole thing. And I'm speaking all this. And he's like, and he's like, it was good. Like people, you know, obviously received the Holy Spirit and stuff like that, but it wasn't what they were hoping at that time, but it came after. And that's very interesting, the way God just does that. Yeah, you know, that's so good because, again, you go back and look at the great revivals. The the passionate preaching came after they started. Right. You know, mm-hmm. in, in, in the meantime, it was like, really? I mean, go back and read some of Jonathan Edwards' sermon. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's it put me he... in a coma after the first page. I tried to read them. And I know it's the, I know it's the King's English, but still, right, yeah. it's like, what? But... You know, for such a time as this, yeah. and, and revival is something God decides to send. But I think that we can position ourselves by knowing mm. the essentials of our faith yeah. and committing to walking in the dust of the rabbi. Yeah. If we do that, I just believe it's, it moves the heart of God. Exactly. And he says, you know, I'm going to bless these people with my presence. And yeah. then the fiery preaching starts. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I'm excited for, and I know you're excited for, for this uh, too. next series and yeah. our conversations. and. I feel like this was a little bit of a glimpse of the future of us doing yeah. some harder topics in the yeah. future. So I can't wait good. till next week mm-hmm. when we get to do conversations on Matthew 24. Oh, yeah. Because I just spent my morning whew, going through that text. Man, <laughs> yeah. how am I going to do that in yeah, 50 right. minutes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chris well, Crumley's over there. Thinking, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, 50 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is revival. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So um, we'll see what happens next week, but yeah. I look forward to the conversation. Yeah, it's going to be good.